All right, so we got our feet wet in Onshape and there's definitely more to come. But what I want to do next is take a small detour. When we created the simple coaster in the Hello World exercise, we didn't really specify the exact size of the coaster. And in the last lesson, we modeled the dice where I specified exactly what dimensions to set everything to. But what about when you're on your own and you need to make sure you set the right dimensions for what you're modeling. To create functional 3D models, objects that you'll print on your 3D printer and use in the real world, you'll need to make sure that they're dimensioned to the right size. It all starts with sizing up your application and being able to take accurate measurements of what your 3D design will be interacting with. So in the example of the coaster, you'll need to measure the largest cup or mug that you plan to use the coaster with and dimension your coaster accordingly. Now for the coaster, of course, you don't need to be super accurate and you can certainly get by with using a ruler to get the measurements. However, in some of the later lessons in this course, we need more accurate measurements than what a ruler can provide to get the proper fit between objects. And that brings us to the subject of this chapter, the caliper. You might be already familiar with calipers, but in case you aren't, a caliper is a very versatile and accurate measuring tool that I highly, highly recommend that you have in your toolbox. It is something I need and use every single day for work. So a little bit about calipers. Most commonly, calipers are used for measuring the outside dimension of an object. Second most common, they can also be used to measure inside dimensions. And third, they can also be used to measure the depth of features such as holes. There are various types of calipers. The vernier, which is probably the most difficult to use since you need to rely on the alignment of lines to take a measurement reading. There are also dial calipers that, as the name suggests, has a dial that is used for reading off the measurements. Dial calipers use a rack and pinion, and with some practice, you can get really quick at interpreting measurements. I have in the past preferred dial calipers. However, with some of the lower quality dial calipers, you have to be careful because the gears can skip steps if you slide the jaws too far too quickly and then you end up with inaccurate readings. And finally, there are electronic or digital calipers. There are no gears involved and readout is instantaneous, almost like a calculator. You just have to read the displayed number. This is the type I currently use for my work and relatively good quality ones are now extremely affordable on Amazon in the range of 10 to $20. And those are more than adequate for your 3D printing adventures. Most calipers are accurate to plus or minus 0 0.001 inches, which is the same as plus or minus 0 0.0254 millimeters, which is the same as plus or minus 25.4 microns. So what do I mean by accuracy? So for example, in inches, it means if something that you're measuring has a true value of one inch and the caliper is certified to a measurement accuracy of plus or minus 0 0.001 inches, which usually can be found on the product description or even the certificate that ships with the caliper, then it is guaranteed to display a measurement of somewhere between 0.999 and 1.001 .001 inch. Think how awesome that is. For under 20 bucks, you can start measuring sizes of objects to a very high level of accuracy. To further put that into context, although most 3D printers have a very high positioning accuracy, by the time that the plastic gets extruded and solidifies into the shape of your print, most hobby grade 3D printers advertise an accuracy of plus or minus 0 0.005 to plus or minus 0 0.01 inches. So our standard caliper can measure to five to 10 times more accuracy 
than your 3D printer can print to, so it makes the caliper a great tool to use on your 3D printing journey. Now of course, to get these accuracies, you have to make sure your caliper is zeroed properly, which we will go over shortly.